Raider. Oakland, L.A., Oakland, Vegas, Raider Nation, wherever, forever. You got your old Uncle Mosh and Raiders fan radio from Murph's Man Cave taking a lighter journey into the dark side. Sit back, put your feet up, pop a top, and enjoy the ride. Here we go! We miss you, we love you, and we'll see you in the Hall of Fame. When you have great coaches, then after you have great coaches, you get great players, you have a great organization. And you tell them one thing, just win, baby. Way up the middle, intercepted to the piano at the 50, high running down, Houston football, and I think Houston victory. The Houston Raiders have scored on the most singular, <laughs> unbelievable, absolutely impossible dream of a play. Well, I love this team. I think this team can win. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I think this team can win. What is up, Raider Nation? Your buddy Murph back once again for what we hope to be a fantastic episode of Raiders Fan Radio. Episode number 155 of Raiders Fan Radio coming to you live from Murph's Fan Cave. That's right here in uh, in the Fan Cave where we do Raiders Fan Radio and we do a whole other litany of shows. And I'm, I'm, di- I'm distracted right now because off to my right, uh, if you're watching on the YouTube stream, oh, and now actually it's, he's in my shot. This is even better. The one and only Uncle Mosh is showing off his, uh, his Raiders sweat that he got for christmas that jacket is so sweet mosh that thing is awesome nice nice well you might as well say something while you're over here you got here you want my mind you want this seat too <laughs> hi <laughs> <laughs> no i'm not drunk no. yet <laughs> <laughs> so of course that's the one and only uncle mosh uh, uh here uh joining me uh in the fan cave for episode number 155 so uh man so we're, if we seem like we're kind of out of sorts it's because like Oh, I don't know. The Raiders got their ass whipped in the last game of the season, so we're, we're out of it. Uh, there's been a whole litany of things that have gone on in the, the world of the NFL, plus it was the holiday season. We had Christmas, and we had New Year's, and we still have family in town. I dumped an entire cup of coffee on the computer that I used to prepare, prepare for the show uh, and, and fried that thing out, so we're just kind of... I'm, I'm, pa- I'm playing injured. I'm battling a little bit of a cold mosh. Like, we're kind of got all, all kind of... If we're discombobulated, it's kind of for good you know, reason, but no as, one cares. No, and we're as banged up as the team. <laughs> I mean, exactly. seriously. Absolutely. You know, we uh, we had Christmas. That was great. Uh, we 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 had fun on New Year's, but you know, uh, in between those two, we took a little uh, we took a little hiatus, a little hiatus, and, and we went and uh, we did some of our other sports. Oh, you and, little gambling. Uh, speaking mosh. of coming home wounded. <laughs> yeah, ain't that the dang truth? The craps table was not uh, kind to. Uh, well, the craps table was okay. It was the other tables that hurt? Well, us, that's true. Right. We, we yeah. got beat up a little bit on the poker. That's, yeah, that's true. That's yeah, true. that's true. But we had fun. We had a good time. We, we had a good time, and we, uh, we 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 took completely took advantage of the seven hundred dollar buffets and the nine thousand dollar drinks. Yes, you know, yeah. and uh, had a good time. We did have, have a good time. time. So, so uh, I don't think I gave you the proper intro there. So that is, of course, the uh, the legendary Uncle Mosh. Appreciate Woo-hoo! you. Appreciate you joining us uh, here for episode number one fifty five of Raiders Fan Radio. Uh, thank you to the chat room, everybody that's joining us live in the chat. Uh, Sergio is in there. Viking Raider Moose Murphy. Hmm, wonder that guy. Uh, is. I wonder. Brazzy I Beach. Brazzy Beach. Brazzy Beach. I, I don't know that. Know yeah, guy. we know that guy. Yeah, I know that guy. Raider Ruse in there. Uh, Fabricator Gill. Ra- uh, you said Raider Rich already. Hardcore Raider. What's up, man? Uh, I'm going to mention Hardcore here in a minute. Uh, uh, Reese Rock is in there, and so appreciate everybody uh, joining us here for the show. So, uh, man, a um, lot to get to tonight. Uh, we're going to keep it kind of. Uh, loose around here, though. We've got just a couple segments to get to, uh, and, but mainly we were going to focus on the Sea of Fans mailbag, uh, dig into that. And, uh, <laughs> hey, tell, what? tell us tell a story about, about the computer. 
No, they'll, they'll, they'll never believe it because we, I mean, we lie all the time, right? I mean, <laughs> no, I mean, because we, well, wow. we kind of do when, when we forget, to, we, you and I will forget to push a button and we'll go, oh, we got lightning again. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's different. <laughs> <laughs> that's different. You know, but, but tell, the, tell the honest to goodness uh, the uh, true story of what you do with a computer. So I have a, my Murph Fan Cave laptop that has, has produced many a show. Oh, my here, gosh. Has, has recorded many, many audio uh, and, and produced live remotes for us and all kinds of stuff. So that's where I do the show prep for from and so i'm a huge fan of this nitro coffee it's, i love it's the best i love it yeah there's there's mosh drinking i got him one and i got and, the, um, I, I got the logo hidden uh there you go it's it's the best stuff to it's it's the, amazing yeah I'm, I'm a huge fan of it and so um anyway so i got us a couple of nitros so I'm, I'm drinking a nitro i get in the show together i go downstairs because i need to print off everything i grab my nitro to take a swig of it and it like kind of hits the bottom of the laptop and like the whole thing like falls out of my hand and lands like rim down yeah, on yeah. top of my laptop pops the top of it and not a drop got on the table or me the entirety of the nitro spilled on the Murph's fan cave and, laptop and, you, and your laptop just sucked it up you sucked it all like, up you couldn't even see it on the keys yes and it then was it, all inside. it was all in there what kind of noises did it, it make? Went like this <laughs> <laughs> and, then, and then I like pick it up and it's like pouring out of the laptop. Oh, like, my, oh gosh. my gosh. So anyways, and I, that was what 40 minutes ago. Yeah, it was yeah. not long ago. And, 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 and like in the, the boy, we had a house full of, of people, cousins and, 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 uh, and, and sons and my mom's here and, and everybody's like, oh, bad words, dad, bad words. And I'm like, you know, it's, it's, I'm kind of more bummed because I just lost all of the show prep. Like, now I got to go back and figure this all back out again. And we like, didn't have time to go get another nitro. No, and I lost the nitro. <laughs> oh, my gosh. Oh, my gosh. Anyways. How funny. Yeah, I know. So, anyway, uh, so anyway that was the, 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 the coffee saga there. So, uh, all right. So, Maj, um, you early uh, early on. Oh, see, I'm, all, uh, I'm out of store. We haven't done the show in a while, so here we go. Let me slow down. Thank you to the chat room. And if you want to join the chat and you want to see us do Raiders Fan Radio Live, you can do so every week, usually on Wednesdays. Today it's Friday because New Year's Day was on Wednesday. Sure. Uh, you can do that at youtube.com slash Murph's Fan Cave. That's M U R F S Fan Cave. Please subscribe to us. Smash the bell, as the kids say. And anytime we go live, you will you can see uh, uh, get a notification on your phone or your device there, and you can come out uh, and check us out and and see us do Raiders Fan Radio Live. Or if you are uh, one that likes to listen to audio podcasts, you can check us out on any podcast service. Just search for Murph's Fan Cave, M U R F S Fan Cave, on any podcast service, and that will get you uh, this show, the flagship show, Raiders Fan Radio. That will also get you. Uh, uh, fan Club Blitz with Splatterhead Tom and Fitz. Uh, we've got some news surrounding that show coming up. Uh, that will get you Mojo's Pod Show. Got some news around that coming up. That will get you Tales from the Nation. And uh, got some news from that coming up. And also, Mondays with Mikey and Murph. And I've actually got news around that coming up. So wow. we're going to kind of cover the the, 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 the scheduling of it's Murph. It's the end of the year with... roundup, man. Yeah, that's round a good way up, to put it. Roundup, recap. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. That's a good way to put it. Put so, it all together. So before we get to that, though, uh, Mosh was showing off uh, his new jacket there as we got started here on the show. So for those of you on the audio, I'll describe it to you. It's this, like, denim, like, but it's not denim. Like, it's more like Carhartt material. Yeah. And it's gray and black, and it's like a Letterman-style jacket. Sure. And it's got a logo on the left side. It's got the, the, the Raider shield on the left. And then it's got this huge Raider shield on on the back of it, and that was like your big Raider gift for the year, right, Yeah, Mosh? absolutely, absolutely. It was great. It was great. One of my students actually got that for me. One of my students who's a fantastic kid, uh, I, and, I, and I told the student, I said, man, I should have cast you as the lead in the play a long time ago, <laughs> years yeah. ago. Yeah. You know, but nah, it was, uh, it was a really nice, it was, a, it was far above and beyond. I mean, I believe it or not, there is kids that like me, and uh, and I and I and they're and they're super super generous and I you know I get and I and I thank all of them for everything they've done for me this year and you know gift cards and and stuff you know teachers are you know and I teach a good subject you know it's yeah, not, yeah yeah you don't, yeah you don't yeah. go out and spend a lot of money on your trig teacher yeah you know? yeah 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 but yeah. your theater teacher that's different you absolutely know? So, anyway it was it was above and beyond the call AG did a great job and you know and, and I'm really really thankful so that's super cool. super cool super cool so um so we want to hear from you in the chat. What your cool Raiders Christmas gifts are uh, this year? Let us know so we can we can shout those out because it's always fun to you know Christmas is a fun time of year anyways more so to give than to receive and 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 hopefully that was your spirit this year but it is fun to get get fun presents too and and when the Raiders presents like that always is really fun and. 
do you get this much? Like I get all the time, like, I want to get you something Raiders, but you already got everything. Like, I don't know what to get you because you already got it all. But it's seemingly like, so this year I got two things that I, ne- that I didn't have and they were super cool. So one of them was from uh, your wife, my aunt, Kathy. Uh, she got me a pizza cutter. A uh, Raiders pizza cutter. That was from the both of us, but go ahead. Well, she claimed it. <laughs> <laughs> I paid for it. She claimed it. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> and the only reason she claimed it is because I got one as well. <laughs> oh, okay. <there> you go. <laughs> so that was really cool. So getting a Raiders pizza cutter, it's got like the Raiders shield on the handle. And it's then, really cool. And then the whole like like surface of the blade has got a Raiders shield on it. Uh, so that's pretty cool. And then also my mom this year uh, got me this. I'm holding it up to the camera. So this is... Uh, it's a team helmet, and it's it's Lego, for lack of a better term. I don't know what that brand is. It's BRXLZ. Um, so check this out. It's 1,392 pieces, and these things are like a quarter of the size of a regular Lego. So it's probably going to take me until the Raiders play their first game in Vegas to finish putting this thing apart, or uh, put this thing together. But it's way cool. Like, it's a way cool thing. And so once I get it done, I'll, it will definitely adorn the shelf here uh, behind me in the Murph's Fan Cave uh, studio so uh yeah. so a lot of fun there let us know in the chat there what you got uh for your raiders gifts this year all right Mosh, uh let's go ahead and jump into the show uh so first off as you as i'm sure you can tell no swag jeff tonight we'll go over there to his camera and you see it's awful lonely over there on that side. oh on the lonely. southern annex or the western annex of the murph fan cave desk no swaggo tonight and uh but we'll welcome him back when he returns to us probably next week but jeff is here with us in spirit and has always uh turned in a great uh, number for us for our episode tonight. So episode number 155, we always like to link our number back to something sig- significant within Raider Nation. And Jeff sent us this. Freddie B., Fred Bolitnikoff, in 1969, Mosh, that was his first All-Pro season. He had 54 receptions for 837 yards and 12 touchdowns. That is an average of 15.5 yards per reception. So 155. Nice. Absolutely. So good job there, Swago. We appreciate that. And uh, always like to celebrate Freddie B here on Raiders Fan Radio. All right, next up, uh, we're going to do some respect. Uncle Mosh, we don't do uh, we don't do shout outs. We don't nope, do props. Nope, Nothing nope. wrong with those things. But uh, we just like to give a little bit of respect, you know. So we're going to give respect to um, three different guys this week. And uh, really a group of guys to start off with. First, I want to give respect uh, to the Fan Club Blitz. I mentioned that we got a lot of uh, news surrounding the Murph Fan Cave kind of lineup uh, coming in. First off, Mondays with Mikey and Murph is on hiatus. Uh, Mikey's got some challenges he's dealing with and uh, doesn't have the, the opportunity right now to focus on doing Raiders content. So we wish Mikey the best. We send our, our love to him. Uh, but you won't have any Mondays with Mikey and Murph on the, on the Murph Fan Cave channel, at least for, uh, for a little while. Uh, but... Uh, and also uh, the fan club blitz. So Chuck and those guys uh, will probably have another one or two fan club blitzes to release here on the Murph Fan Cave Network. Uh, but those guys are, they're not stopping doing the show, uh, but they're moving on. What they're going to do is they're going to take the fan club blitz and they're now going to host it on their own network. They awesome. Have, Good for them. Very much so. They have another podcast that they do called the Nebra Nation, which is all about, you know, like, like craft beer and things like that. And uh, And they're a little more loose in their you know, uh, vocabulary, uh, than what we are here. And so, um, it's, uh, they're going to take the fan club blitz and you're going to hear the fan club blitz in the raw, uh, for lack of a better yeah, term there you go. Uh, over there on their network. And you know what? And it's a great fit for them. And I'm, I'm so proud for those guys and what they've accomplished and how they've grown. And we wish them absolutely nothing but the best. And you'll, we'll continue to support, uh, everything that they do. And, uh, you know, I'm just thankful that we got to be the opportunity or we got the opportunity to kind of be the platform for them to kind of yeah. hone what they are. And now they're taking it to the next level, and God bless them, and they're, they're going to rock at it, and they're going to be great. And if, and if any of our listeners haven't checked out their show, you need to. Whether they're with us or not, man, they yes. are a riot. They are, and they're so much fun. So fun. You know, and they just, you just, I mean, you can't help but smile when you listen to them. I love it when I'm driving, especially <laughs> when I'm in, <coughs> excuse me, when I'm in traffic, man. I, they get me fired up, man. They're, <laughs> oh, they're just so funny. They're so funny. They're so funny. So good. And so, again, nothing but the best for those guys, and thankful for the time that we had them hosted here on the Murph's Fan Cave Network. And, you know, we're, uh, we're far from PG all the time, uh, but when we decided to do this whole podcast thing, we decided that we wanted to have our, 
our network be that way because we wanted to be able to appeal to uh, to everybody. We wanted to be able to provide you content that you could have on the uh, well, on the, for on, Coach and Haley, and then and then like tonight, Q said that his wife and daughter are watching the show. With there him. you go, exactly. So, so you know. we, you're in the car with your kids. We don't want you scramble for the mute button again. This is not nothing wrong with anything else that anybody else does with their content, and, and we embrace it all. And good friends of ours uh, that do this sure uh, have a little more salty material, and so you know, but it's just anyway. So it's. Good going to be a better fit for Chuck and those guys to take it to their thing and it's going to be awesome and we'll continue to uh to support one another all right next up so I mentioned two subtractions well there was got a big addition and I want to give much respect to Mojo uh and Mojo's pod show uh find him on YouTube that's the the his his main area there is on YouTube and it's Mojo's pod show m-o-j-o-e-s pod show and then the audio version of Mojo's pod show we're now hosting on uh on on the Murph's fan cave network and his show has come along already amazingly like the response to it that I know the response he's gotten on his YouTube channel and also what we've heard on the audio versions back here from you all. Uh, you guys are digging it. I'm digging it. Like Mojo has been a fantastic addition to what we got going uh, on. And there's nothing better than watching him sip a beer. Uh, you just, he loves it, man. <laughs> loves it's just, it, man. it's yeah. Yeah. Hats off to Moj, man. He has got some of the best beer, like, uh, what do you call it? Comes them? Like, like yeah, it comes across, like the review. Yeah, yeah. It's like his it's appreciation like, for it's it. It's legit. Uh, it's hoppy. You know? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> I love it, man. Yeah. He's, he's the bomb when it comes to that. Absolutely. And he's like, well, we're going to get into this brew. Let's get into this brew. <laughs> <laughs> but no, and he's had a lot of friends from our show uh, on there with him. Uh, Big Raider Trucker. Uh, he and Q just did Q, one. Q just, well, actually, Trucker didn't make it onto that one, but Q was on there. Uh, so anyways, great, great stuff. So appreciate him and uh, much respect to him. All right. So now to uh, last up, just to tag it, Tales from the Nation coming up in the offseason. Me and Swag Jeff, we'll, we'll do Raiders Fan Radio. We'll probably move into it's a kind of off season schedule where we go every other week and then we will uh, we'll backfill a lot of that uh, those weeks with tales from the nation with me and swag Jeff. We're even going to do some of those live. We thought about that. that oh, that'd be, yeah, be fun. Be fun. I might guest on some of those. Well, there you go. There you go. That'd be cool. That'd be really cool. So, anyways, all right. Uh, next up, let's uh, let's and I got one more thing and then we're I, we're gonna promise we're gonna jump into some heavy raider content here. But first, Mosh, you know. What you got, buddy? What you got? I, I want to give a lot of respect to a guy that I, I think really, really, really brought it strong here at the end of the Who's year. Who's that? J.J. Abrams. You know, with the release. Oh, the guy that, re- that, that uh, did all the writing for the Blacklist. With the release of The Rise of Skywalker, he really, 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 not, not necessarily fixed a lot of what was wrong with The Last Jedi, but he certainly went back and took a lot of the things with The Last Jedi <sighs> And you know he 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 did he appreciated what it was, but yet he complimented it and he brought it like no spoilers, Mosh, but just really the redemption of everybody <laughs> and the way that you know like bringing some characters back in the fashion that he did. I think it was just and absolutely was completely different. You know, it was really just Star Wars really, has to be one of the most overblown, I thought, tedious, and boring franchises out there. The only reason anyone defends it is because of the sentimental value it holds. They grew up with it. And so in their mind, they remember it as a great movie. In reality, though, it's a children's movie, and it comes across as a children's movie. It has no plot, no story, and no substance. I think that deep down, everyone knows this, whether or not they're willing to admit it. Take a few minutes to think about this. The plot isn't unique in the slightest, and it isn't in-depth. It's also kind of boring. Most of the scripts seem to have been written in one draft and turned in as good enough. The one thing I can say that it's going for, that it has going for it, is it's a revolutionary special effects. It's the first of its kind and unique in that regard. Unfortunately, the special effects were so clearly given far more priority than plot or characters that it makes. It makes the movie more of a novelty than anything else. Ouch. It's an incredibly basic and formulative story with a very common structure. It's not exactly difficult to understand. Jeez. Most people have low standards and are easily impressed. Okay. Laser swords, princesses, evil lords, magic, and some really good John Williams music. People will lap it up. I get it. I get it. I'm not just entertained by it. I want more depth and meaning behind my films. You understand what I'm saying here, Murph? 
No. Thus, <laughs> those who are more involved with filmmaking and thus are exposed to more kinds of films are far less impressed by Star Wars than the general population. You have to accept that not everyone likes what you like. It's kind of patronizing to assume that it's because they don't understand it. Maybe you don't understand anything better, so you think it's good. <laughs> what? I remember going to see the original uh-huh. in the theater when it came oh, out. George Lucas forced you And even right though now. I didn't care for it, partly the story, well, maybe the dialogue seemed cheesy, but it's all the little things. One or two I can get past, but elite troops that can't hit the broadside of a barn and wear armor they can't see out of the fact that the fact that clearly intelligent robots well some of them were intelligent were essentially slaves worms the size of skyscrapers that live on asteroids or in a barren desert what the hell do they normally eat when our heroes aren't around it goes on and on, Murph. Jeez, man. I just All couldn't right. manage to suspend my disbelief enough. But what moved it from meh to I actually hate this was the hordes of frothing fanboys that will go berserk Golly. if someone doesn't think the movie is better than Jesus with a side of Buddha. Gosh, Mosh. Are we, are we... Go ahead. No, I'm... I'm almost done. <laughs> Jeez. Let's all be real here. If it wasn't for A New Hope, Empire Strikes Back, and Return of the Jedi, nobody would care about Star Wars. The yeah. only reason that the franchise has become so massively successful is because of those three movies. Much of the love for the series stems from those properties. You don't see people celebrating Jar Jar Binks or General Grievous Instead, everyone dresses up like Darth Vader and Han Solo. Need I say more? What makes this a bit more interesting is that the original trilogy would not have succeeded as well if it were to come out today. It was so loved because of how different it was, and generations of people have held on to that for years. The only thing oh, good gosh. that I can give you. Okay. Legos. <laughs> Yeah. Legos are some of the best toys for creativity well, in yeah. a child. They bring the, uh, the ability to build whatever they want is something that inspires even the most cynical kids. However, these are also many properties and licenses that Lego holds, and it leads the creative. It, it, it takes everything away from it. The problem is that all of the themes that they've done over the years – None have been as long-lasting as Star Wars. For decades, Lego has based on the galaxy far, far away. And they've come out with more to come on that way. What makes this upsetting to people like me is that some cooler Lego themes have been lost. Whatever happened to the Lord of the Rings? There was more potential with that series. What about the Harry Potter series? Anyway... Star Wars dominates the Lego scene, and the creator's putting so much time into that theme. There are others that, well, they lose some build quality as a result. There are numerous properties that Lego could adapt, but because the big focus is on Star Wars, it has since limited their scope in regard to the other licenses. Perhaps that's the eclectic little kid in me talking. What? <clears throat> All right. Don't rush. That's all I got. <laughs> yeah, but Baby Yoda's really cute. We're running out of time. My life is running out of lifespan. All right, let's talk about the Raiders. <laughs> You're out of all control. Right, girls, pay attention. You got your old Uncle Bosch here with an update. That's right. I got some stuff for you. Take out a piece of paper, a uh, pencil, a pen. Ah, uh, heck, fun. use your pocket knife and carve the info into your dashboard as you're driving down the highway. First off, you need to like us on our fan page on Facebook. That's right. Go to Facebook at Raiders Fan Radio Podcast. Don't forget about the Twitter. You know your old Uncle Mosh. He twits now. That's right. 
go to at Raiders Fan Radio. Also, don't forget the Instagram at Raiders Fan Radio. Or what about our website? That's right, RaidersFanRadio.com. Heck, if you want it to, you if you want it to, if you want to, you can even email us show at RaidersFanRadio.com or call us on the Raiders Fan Radio Hotline, 909-345-3346. That's 909-345-3346. Don't forget Merv's Fan Cave on the YouTube where you can get all the show links like the Fan Club Blitz with Splatterhead and Fitz. Find all our stuff on podcast providers like Stitcher, iTunes, and Google Play. All right, did I hit the time limit? Good. I got. I got to tell you. You know what's what's really funny is um, when I was doing my show prep. You know, I mean, with with this this running thing that we have about my hatred for Star Wars. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I'm doing my show prep, and uh, it's amazing. The internet is just. It's it just blows my brain. My 61 year old brain. Right. That you can find anything on there. So I you can Google. No matter what, you, I mean, you can Google oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Star Wars deaths. So you, you know, would think things that there would be 100,000 hits on, right? So I wrote, I, I Googled in, reasons I hate Star Wars. Yeah? Thousands. Oh, really? Thousands. I, I had another 25 minutes worth, but I know Mojo would have peed three more times, you know? Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Say what he, tell everybody what he said. Oh, Mojo said, I went, I went to pee and I came back and you're still on this, Uncle Mosh? <laughs> and I love it. And, and Aaron, the Q-Dog Raider in the chat says, the, Uncle Mosh explaining Star Wars is like me trying to explain Greece. <laughs> <laughs> that was really funny. That was really funny. So, hey, I appreciate everybody in the chat room. Hardcore Raider, Aaron, the Q-Dog Raider, Pirate 1975, Patch. Uh, who else Raider, Mar- Raider Ramon, uh, Herman Re- Munster, Reese Rock is in there. Yeah, appreciate every, all of you. So, uh, so speaking of Hardcore Raider, I do want to mention real quick uh, before we move on uh, to our, our first segment here. I'm going to be on the Hardcore Raider show tomorrow. Uh, I'm going to join. I don't remember the list off the top of my head, but I believe it's Kenny from Pillaging is going to be there. Oh, Wayne Mabry, the sweet. Violator. Um, oh gosh, oh, there's more. Uh, but anyway. Oh. There's, it's going to be there's there's five or six of us that are going to be on there. Look for the Hardcore Raider YouTube channel and uh, and, and check us out uh, there tomorrow morning. Uh, we're going to go on. It's uh, I believe ten thirty Pacific. So okay. uh, so for those of you that are familiar with Hardcore and his channel, uh, definitely check us out there. And 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 Hardcore, if you don't mind popping in on, on the chat there and let me know the other guys because I want to make sure I give everybody uh, respect there for whoever else is going to be on the show. I apologize, I don't remember them off the top of my head. I know. Oh, your boy Q, I believe is going to be one of them. Uh, um, oh gosh, I don't remember everybody. So, anyways, hit me up there, Hardcore, if you don't mind. All right, Mosh. Yeah. We don't do math. No, we hate math. We love numbers, though. We love numbers. So let's do some numbers. Come on with it. Let's do some numbers. Swaggy's right. not here to correct us. Absolutely. There we go. So I'm going to throw some numbers at you. So here we are at the end of the year. You know, of course, going into the season, we didn't expect the Raiders to do more than 7-9, and 8-8, nine, eight and 9-7. Eight, and, and then all of a sudden, we had this, like, amazing beam of hope in the middle of the year. Sure. We beat some teams we could have beat. Uh, or, or we should beat, and then we we were set up nicely to maybe uh, pull off a win or two that maybe we were uh, you know the underdog on, and it didn't happen, and so we kind of got let down. So we kind of had this little bit of a roller coaster uh, this year. So um, a little tough in that respect, but anyways, yeah. At the end of it, uh, we're we're. Uh, we're, we're picking 12th in the draft this year. Uh, we're behind Cincinnati, Washington, Detroit, the Giants, Dolphins, uh, San Diego Chargers, uh, Carolina, Arizona, Jacksonville, Cleveland, the Jets, and then us at 12, and then Chicago's pick at 19. Um, that we, Mosh and I were talking about it before the show. That failed two-point conversion at the end of the game really benefited us by five draft positions. Absolutely. And Mosh, you had a great point. You you say it, I don't want to say it for you about about what how win win that was for us. Well it, had we had we made the two the, the, the two point conversion and won the game. Okay. Uh it wouldn't have helped us anyway because we not all the not all the planets had aligned for us to make the playoffs all either right. way. So it really was a win win situation. So you, you go for the two points, you beat the donkeys, that's great. You miss it you get you move up five spots in the draft. Great win-win situation. Absolutely. So, so there was, you know, I mean, I, I love I love football because uh, I love to listen to people talk about football. We do it, 
We go, oh, why doesn't he do it? Why doesn't he throw the ball more? Because he gets interceptions. Why doesn't he Why doesn't he try to go for it on a fourth down? Because they don't make it. Why didn't he go for the two-point conversion? You know? And then it's the other way around. You know? Yeah. Why did he do that? Why, you know? So it's it's either way. It's it's Usually it's a lose-lose situation. But that <laughs> yeah. wasn't. That was a win-win. No matter how it ended up, it was going to be good. And in the long run, you know, okay, so we finished, we finished you know, 8-8. Eight and eight. Okay, what does that say? Okay, it says we doubled our our score. But if we can, if we get another winner in the draft, and I have faith in Mayock oh, and yeah, Gruden, yeah, like this draft, we get another Max, we get another Abram. Oh my god, we get it. I mean, yeah. oh come on now, yeah, come and on. That's, and that's just our first. We have two in the first round, and then three in the third. So uh, the way that our late later round picks have worked out this year, Hunter Renfro, Max Crosby, yep. guys like that. Yep. I mean, like come on with it. Like that's that's awesome. Um, Hardcore jumped in there. Okay, so here's what we got. Q from Locked On, uh, Kenny from Pillaging Podcast, The Violator, Wayne Mabry, Watts Raider, Hardcore Raider, and me. Those are your six. Those, so you're going to find all of us together tomorrow on the Hardcore Raider YouTube channel. So okay, and how can we get to that? Just search on YouTube. Just search for Hardcore Raider, all one word, Hardcore, new word, Raider. And you'll find his channel, and then check us out. We're going tomorrow at 10 a, 1030 Pacific. Okay. okay, so there'll be like six pitchers with all you guys talking? Yeah, yeah, exactly. Cool, cool. Yeah, it's going to be like a Raider right Roundtable, like a season roundup kind of a thing uh, with all those folks. So, uh, so very, very uh, uh, thankful to be part of that. And it's a great idea. Like, I love the idea yeah, of, like, fantastic. bringing in Thanks for doing that, content Hunter. creators and, like, other uh, people that represent fandom. And so, hey, that's a if, – if, if those are the peers that we're considered to be with, then I'll take it all day long every day. Oh, yeah. Like, those guys are great. So, anyways, uh, good stuff there. All right, Mosh, here's some numbers for you. Are you ready? So, I'm going to give you some numbers, Raider Nation, and in the, in the chat, give us your feedback on some of these numbers. Mosh, story number one. Number number one. In six seasons with Derek Carr at quarterback, Raiders were last in the NFL in points allowed and 28th in points scored. In the six seasons before Derek Carr was quarterback, that is Jamarcus Russell, Bruce Gradkowski, uh, Jason Campbell, Carson Palmer, uh, Terrell Pryor, and Matt McGloin, the Raiders were 31st in points allowed and 28th in points scored. So basically, no difference in six seasons Versus six seasons. Any takeaways on that? Mm, it's kind of a tough one to swallow. Uh, a lot of ineptness there, isn't it? Eh, yeah. <laughs> 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 no, I'm kidding. You know, I got to go back to I got to go back to what a lot of people have said. Uh, I I even think Q might have even said it in the chat earlier that that year three. Is the turning point in a rebuilding? In it's a supposed re- to be. It's supposed to be in a rebuild. Out. Okay. So, so year one, we had four wins. Okay. On paper, year two, we had seven wins. Okay. Arguably, we could talk about the calls that went against us. We can talk about Renfro's touchdown. That was a touchdown. Ingold's that touchdown was, was a touchdown. Ingold's touchdown. Uh, Derek Carr being called sliding out of bounds. What was oh, was that? Was was oh, was that? Did, what did he have? An index card that was four feet wide. <laughs> Holy crap, man! Oh, you know, my gosh, we can go on and on and on about that. Um, yeah, but well, so so we have seen the improvement. There's no doubt about it. And I and I and I will go. And so you. So first point: year three is the year will tell. Okay. Year three is the year will tell. All right. My next point is I go back to I go back to where we were in August, July and August yeah. of this year, and we were going, man, I'll be so fired up about a seven and nine season. Yeah. There was a whole lot of us that said that. That's right. A whole lot of us. So, you know, I know that I know that on paper, you know, this, the same people that say, oh, you know, Derek Carr can win all these all these awards and he can have all these records and he can have all that, but we're not winning games and we're not in the playoffs and blah 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 blah. But Again, it's it's statistics. They can be read either way, you know. So I love that you just said that, yeah. Because that's a fantastic segue into the next set of numbers, Mosh. So I'm going to give you one set. This is Derek Carr, I think, in a nutshell, right here. And I think this is why fandom is so conflicted. And when you look at social media, I love it now. There's the car stands and there's the car haters, and like the middle is now gone. The middle, you've either moved into full. I don't know, stand them or full-on supporter of Derek Carr, or you have moved into, like, hater. 
I'm still in the middle. Like, I'm still, like, I'm riding with Derek Carr until there's a better option. And I think that the Raiders need to explore the idea of developing a better option or at least an additional option or another op, whatever that is. Um, but I'm not a, I don't want to just get rid of them to get rid of them. And I think a lot of people that are the haters, like they just want to get rid of Derek. Well, take a look around the NFL. Like there's not like they're, you know, there's like littered with people are littered with a bunch of good quarterbacks out there. Right. And you look at the amount of failed first round draft picks at quarterback. They way exceed the Andrew Lux and Peyton Mannings and, uh, you know, whatever, uh, Kyler Murray's even. I mean, there's there's way more examples of guys that fail than there is guys that do well. So it's not like we're just going to automatically, like, plug and play someone else. So easy with those people that you just want to get rid of Derek. Look, again, I've been highly critical of Derek here towards the end of the year, but I don't want to completely just get away from it just because. Like, there's got to be a better reason for us to move to, to consider to move on. All right, so that said... Here's some Derek Carr numbers for you. So here's the upside of Derek Carr, Mosh. So here's the di- the dichotomy, or to use the new Star Wars term, the dyad, Mosh. The coexistence. The dyad. Here's the Will dyad. You stifle yourself? It's the dyad in the force. The dyad of Derek Carr. <laughs> So here's the Ray side. (laughs) The Ray. I won't tell you her last name. Spoiler alert. All right. All right. Well, she's actually got two last names. Is it one of them Kenobi? I'm not going to tell you. Because I I respect (laughs) those that haven't seen it. Can I just tell you something? That's the only last name I know. (laughs) (laughs) Well, you know Skywalker. I thought that was his first name. Oh, jeez. Yeah, Skywalker. Sky Space Walker. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah, no, and it's not Kenny Skywalker. Talk about the guy a terrible who's... actor. Don't even shut get the me front st- door. Don't really hate on Mark Hamill over here. Don't hate on Mark Hamill. You know Mark Hamill could walk in the door right now. Oh my gosh! But I was supposed to go to Tashi Station to pick up some power converters. <laughs> <laughs> okay. All right. So here's the Ray. Here's the light side of Derek Carr in this forced dyad. Derek Carr stats this season rating. 100.8 as a quarterback. Second in Raiders history to Stabler's 103.4 in 1976. Yards per attempt, 7.9. For all of you that, that call him check down Charlie, that's the second highest for the team in the past 29 years next to Carson Palmer, who had 8.4 in 2011. He threw for 4,054 yards. That is second all time to Rich Gannon's 4,689 yards in his MVP season of 2002. And he set the completion percentage team record of 70.4. So there is the good side of Derek Carr. There's the light side of Derek Carr. Uncle Mosh, what say you? I'm in. (laughs) <laughs> you know where I'm at. I know. That's my quarterback, man. I'm I'm in, I'm in till till you know how I am about loyalty and about and about, you know, uh, respect if you will. As long as he's as long as he's got that gold C on his chest, right? And he's my quarterback right. and my head coach has got him in that position, he's got my vote. All right. Now that doesn't mean that I get frustrated with him. Sure I get frustrated with him. And here's why. Again, an excellent segue, Uncle Mosh. Here's the Kylo side. Here's the dark side. Here's the Sidious. 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 Here's the dark dark Vader. Gosh, I can't talk tonight. Uh, You know why you can't talk? Because it's a terrible subject. Here's the Darth Vader. Here's the turn. This is the Anakin Skywalker. (laughs) Oh, there's another last name I know. Spark in his lights. There you go. Spark in his lights. (laughs) (laughs) Anakin Skywalker sparking his lightsaber, walking into the oh Jedi Temple, God, attacking the younglings. Everybody. This is the dark side, y'all. This is the dark side of Derek Carr. The Force Dyad Mosh, the dark side, the Kylo Ren. You ready? Uh-huh. Derek Carr in two, year two. Derek Carr in year two of John Gruden's system versus year one. You ready for this? The dark side. He had five more yards. He had point three. That's three-tenths more yards per game he had two more touchdowns he had two less interceptions and he was sacked 22 less times so 
what this means is that this is a team that was dramatically improved on the offensive line, a team that was dramatically improved in the running game. You could argue that the defense was the same, and I'll give you that because they were still bad. But offensively, we improved all around Derek Carr, and Derek Carr was still Derek Carr. There's the dark side of Derek. Uncle Mosh, what say you? I say if you don't have somebody that can catch a ball, then who are you going to throw it to? And I'm not saying that our that that don't get me wrong. We've got some we've got some talent out there. But we we were and you could say that we were almost infiltrated by the dark side with A B. We almost oh. we almost bought into the evil empire. I don't even know all the words. <laughs> no, you're doing good. Sith lords and all that oh, yeah, stuff. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. But yeah. It, it it didn't happen. You know, so so here's like it's like it's like when you know the original two movies, it's like like number two. You know, that was the dark one. That was the sad oh, one. Oh, Empire, man. So it was Empire. Ended on so, a downer. So what happened? So we got rid of AB. We kicked the dark side out. We got rid of the, the evilness, and it ended on a little bit of a downer. So you're saying that we are going to have a celebration in, at Yavin Base in year three of the rebuild. Return of the Jedi. Return, Return of, of the, of the Jedi. Raiders. That's oh, what I'm trying to say. That's what I'm trying to say. I'm going to get all lathered up over I'm here, man. I'm all fired excited up. about Star, Star Trek. Shoot. Almost yummy having me curse right there. You almost had me curse. That was good, Mosh. All right. <laughs> you know, it's, it's pretty bad when you can suck me into a show about Star Wars. <laughs> That's how bad Raider yeah. football is, right? <laughs> I know, right? <laughs> so, all right, one more last, just a little Nancy negative uh, Debbie Downer comment about Derek Carr. Derek Carr lost his 55th game as a starting quarterback. Oh. You know who the only, this is a trivia question. Here you go. Put this in your holster, Raider Nation, for when you go out to the bars this summer uh, and, you're, and it's Raider trivia time. The only quarterback to lose more games in his first six seasons with 56 games, so lost one more game than Derek Carr. Uncle Mosh, who do you think it was? Ooh, that's a tough question. A very and tough it's, question. And it's going to be somebody I wouldn't expect. Uh, yes and no, because there's a dyad here, Mosh. I don't know. Is that a Star Wars word? Well, it's just, it's a, it's a, think of, it's a, like, it could be a, a, a joint, a unison. Like, a myriad would be a lot of things. A dyad would be two. <sighs> Tell me who it is. Jamarcus Russell? No. Think a dyad. Think someone that would share space with Derek. Oh, Stabler? No, 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 no. Well, that's no, what Stabler, I'm saying. Stabler won a lot that's of games. That's what I'm saying, Yeah. No. How, how about this? I'll give you one more hint. Shared the house. Uh, oh, his brother, yeah. David. Yeah, oh, my David. gosh. I didn't even think about that. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, David Carr. Oh, my gosh. Yeah, that's right. He lost 56. 56 games. So I remember Derek Carr lost, uh, David Carr lost 56 games uh, in his first six seasons. Derek Carr has lost 55 games in the first six seasons. All right. Enough of this. Enough of this, mm, this down stuff, man. We're seven and nine. It's a bummer of enough already. Let's talk about something positive. You ready to talk uh, about something positive? Defensive line? Yes. Oh, 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 oh. Nice. Come on. Let's talk about My Max. Big boys. Come on. Max Crosby. The only NFL players to ever register a rookie season of 10 sacks, four forced fumbles, and four passes defended. Javon Curse. Julius Peppers and Max freaking Crosby. No freaking way. That's badass. That is badass. You rock on, Condor. Hey, Raider Nation. This is Max Crosby from the Oakland Raiders. And goes down, and Max Crosby, who forced a fumble last week. You're listening to Murph, Mosh, and Swag Jeff on Raiders Fan Radio. Thank you so much. Just win, baby. Fading, looking, looking, looking. He's under the gun. He's fired. He's thrown. It is. All 
All right, so here at Raiders Fan Radio, you can contact us in a dyad of ways. <laughs> 909-345-3346. Leave us a voicemail. If we play your voicemail three times on the air, you become what we refer to as a made man or a made woman. You can also email us. That is show at RaidersFanRadio.com. And if you email us and get your email read an undefined amount of times, we will also refer to you as a made man or a made woman. Uh, in the chat, love the chat, and... Uh, I want to shout them out real quick. Joining us live, uh, YouTube.com slash Murph's Fan Cave. Reese Rock, excuse me, Mojo's Pod Show. What's up, Mojo? What's up, Aaron the Q-Dog Raider? Watts Raider. Johnny Smalls is in there. Pirate 1975. Eye Patch. Herman Munster. May Spit Fire. Coach Davis. Harley Raiderette. Adam Hill. Appreciate all of you joining us there. Dakota Raider. What's up, Dakota? Hadn't heard from you in a minute, man. We'd love to hear from you. Sugar Shane, what's up? Edgar, what's up? Uh, so uh, you can contact us uh, that way and join us there in the chat live. And also, so in the chat, they were uh, talking about also positives this year. Hunter Renfro, Josh Jacobs, of course, who hopefully will be rookie yep, of the year yep, if, yep. if, uh, if uh, uh, A.J. Brown doesn't get it from the Titans. Uh, go Titans this weekend, by the way, against the freaking Patriots. Absolutely. If, if you're not rooting for the Titans against the Patriots, you're doing it wrong. Um, so anyways, uh, appreciate all of you there. And, yes, there's a lot of other positives to get to, a lot more numbers to get to. But in the interest of time, we just didn't jump on every, every uh, aspect of it. But those are two great shout-outs, Renfro and uh, also Josh Jacobs. Heck, it, uh, extending Richie Incognito was a big deal. Yep. That yep. was another big one. Uh, gosh, can't wait to get Jonathan Abram back. Like, there's a lot of good stuff. Oh, my stuff gosh. Going in. Um, okay, so I mentioned the two ways to contact us. We're going to kick this segment off with the emails, though, and turn it over to the one and, all, one and only Uncle Mosh. Murph, Uncle Mosh, Swaggy J, Vinny, and Raider Nation. Well, the season is over. And I, for one, am pleased with the progress of the Raiders this year. Although they didn't measure up to my usual preseason expectation of another Lombardi trophy, they did nearly double their wins from last year, which is commendable. The fact that we entered Week 17 with a chance of a playoff spot should not be overlooked. You know what? Amen. Seriously. Yeah, right. The fact, the fact that we were in the mix that the last week up of to the, the last week that, that up till halfway through the day, we were talking about our our shot at the playoffs. Yeah. And we're like, seriously, like we were a Jaguars win away from like being in. Like, yeah. you know what I mean? Like to having that two point conversion instead be a field goal to go into overtime and test our medal for it, the playoffs. Was, like, I mean, seriously, you know, it, it wasn't the days when we were in or out. You know, I mean, it was like, you know, we're, we're there. It wasn't like last year when we were out. Oh, yeah, we're like five yeah. games in. You could just take a nap for the rest yeah, of the season. You know, it was over. Or, yeah, you know, or the years, the glory years when we were like, no, we're there. We're good. You know, right, we're right. in. Uh, is it number one or number two seed? You know, kind of stuff. But that's yeah. coming. That's yeah, coming. That's coming. next year. Better. The future looks brighter than it has for years. The move to Las Vegas will bring income opportunities for the Raiders that Oakland never could. True. Controlling their stadium instead of merely being a tenant will enable them to compete with other teams like never before. I read recently that the value of the Raider franchise has doubled due to the move to Las Vegas. I think you did a, a segment on that one time, Murph, about the with that happening, it, how much of a business move this really was. Oh, you know, huge. And that it was huge. Exactly. I forget the numbers off the top of my head, but I think it was like a billion dollars or right. something crazy right. like that. Yeah. Here's to the Gruden Mayock team scoring another coup in the next year's Las Vegas draft. Raider Nation forever. Frank from NorCal. Frank is quite the, uh, he's quite the, the, the proficient. He does emails he calls i mean he's just all over the place frank's, i love it frank's kind of all over the place now like he's a very active member of the raiders fan radio community and uh you know mosh we have our thing here that you know you got to email the show an indefinite amount of time exactly and we've had people like Haley, uh paul and uh i think it's time to introduce another i think so emailer to the made man list what do you i think, think it mosh? should i think we don't you know Sometimes we forget about folk on the on the made man list, but I don't think we should forget about Frank. Let's it's not time. forget about Frank. It's time. Welcome to the crew, Frank. You are a made man. You showed you are part of the family by participation. By chance, a man like yourself should make enemies, then they would become my enemies. Showing you are a friend of Raiders Fan Radio. You have leapt across the line. Friendship is everything. Friendship is more than talent. 
It is more than the government. It's almost equal to family. Be loyal. Made man, Raider fan. Someday, and that day may never come, I'll call upon you to do a service for me. But until that day, accept this as a gift. And don't ever forget, words can hurt more, but silence can break hearts. Congratulations, Frank, in NorCal. That's from our stomping grounds originally back in the day. And uh, congratulations to him on becoming a made man. All right. Well, let's move on. All right. I got another email to read. Oh, it's your guy. Oh, yeah, but. Oh, wait a minute. Oh, we forgot Greg, Uncle we, Mosh. He was bummed at Christmas, too. He asked me about that. He he was calling you Grinch and me Scrooge. Yeah. And like, it was a whole yeah, thing. And like, it was bad. It was a little upsetting, and he was in the corner with his eggnog, and it didn't even have booze in it. Yeah, he's, just, I, he's just slugging back an eggnog. And then, the, you know, remember the worst part was we, we did the Secret Santa, and he ended up with all these, like, gourmet coffees and all this stuff. He's the only guy we know that don't drink coffee. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, and I gave him his Christmas card, and it said, I owe you, made man. Yeah. You know, but, yeah. We'll yeah. get him next time. We'll get him next time. Season's greetings, fellas. Hope you're all well and you've had a great Christmas and a new year. The festive period started well with the brilliant win against the Chargers. We dominated things for pretty much the whole game, and it was a real treat. It also provided me with one of my best moments of the season. There aren't many things better than watching Phillip Rivers have a meltdown because the naughty Raiders fans made too much noise and he couldn't hear the play calling in his own stadium. <laughs> I, I love that seeing so him. Funny. That was the best. That was the best. <laughs> we didn't do a show after that. Game. Oh, my God. That was freaking alert. When said. he's pointing the sidelines going, I can't hear. I can't hear. That was amazing. Paul goes on to say, I love to see him irritated. He should do everyone a favor now and retire to his children's farm. <laughs> oh, my sorry, gosh. His children's farm. <laughs> oh, my gosh. Sadly, we <laughs> couldn't follow it up with a win against the donkeys. Though we really should have, the early dominance of the game should have led us to being at least two scores ahead. But we didn't finish off the early drives and consequently missed out right at the end. I won't say that I really want to about the officials in the game, as this is a family show, but it's difficult <laughs> not to get angry when you see such an abject collection of fools. It's been the same for most of the season, though, hasn't it? Overall, in my opinion, this has been a largely positive season. Yes, there have been frustrations, but when everything has been put out into context, we've made very positive strides. If we can attack the draft with the same purpose as last year, we can become a genuine threat again soon. Like it. I'm sure we've all got our thoughts on who should be moved on before we move to Vegas, but for me, a deep breath is needed and a few days cooling off before the axe drops. So, the playoffs await. I think we'll see a different winner of the Lombardi Trophy this year, and as long as it's not the Winers or the Queefs, then I'll rest easy. Can you imagine if it's the freaking Niners and Chiefs in the Super Bowl? <sighs> That's gross. I don't think I'd watch it. I mean, we'd have to watch it, but I can't root for one or the other. No, we Murphy. would. No, we wouldn't. But like, really, like that. That's that's like worst case scenario ever. Can we? In, can instead of going on the big TV, can we? Can we do Xbox on the big TV and have it like a little portable that would, one? Next that would to be it? funny. We'll do a picture in picture. Yeah, yeah, and have yeah. It be on the bottom. And we'll, on the bottom. And we'll set up our own Super Bowl. We'll watch Heidi. (laughs) (laughs) That's not a bad idea. The real Heidi Bowl. Oh my god! And we'll do a we'll do a live commentary on Heidi. Oh my gosh! How funny would that be? Yeah, we'll do a live stream commentary on Heidi and have the 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 Chiefs and 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 Winers in the bottom corner. Oh my gosh, that'd be great. Gosh, that's so gross. I hope that doesn't happen. Uh, As we move into 2020, a huge thank you to all three of you for your work at RFR. I never thought supporting the Raiders could get better, but you guys make it even more special. Here's to 2020. Love you, Raider Nation. His Lordship Paul Egerton from Shopshire, Mississippi. Paulie Award winner 2019. Sizzler scorekeeper. Proud made man. And two-time winner of the Raiders Fan Sizzler Award. Paul! 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 Paul. 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 Paul.
Paul. Paul. Paul. Your name Paul. Paul. Hello. Paul. Paul. I met him with Paul. Who? Paul. Paul. Yes, Paul. Paul's not here. Hey, Paul. Paul. Uh, hi. I'm Paul. Wow. <laughs> I just love 30 seconds of Paul. I do too, man. I, 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 when, up, I, man. when I'm driving, that's the best. <laughs> it's so I funny, man. It. Good job. Well, appreciate Paul. Appreciate you, uh, uh, your email from across the pond in Shropshire, Mississippi. And, uh, okay, Mosh, so there was, uh, uh, as I mentioned at the top of the show, a wee bit of an accident in, uh, when it comes to the, oh, Murph, my to the Murph Fan Cave Show prep laptop. And so um, these calls, we're going to play them raw. None of these have been edited. Uh, so I don't think there's any bad words because uh, Google gives us a pretty decent translation. And I don't think there's any. But if there's a slip up, forgive us and we'll, uh, we'll, we'll correct it on the audio version. But for those of you on the YouTube, if you hear a bad word live, it, uh, it was um, not intentional there. So, uh, so we're going to let these things fly. And we've got a handful to get to tonight. And so uh, we have our made man and made women crew, and we have a leader. We call him the captain. He's the capo. He is Aaron, the Q-Dog Raider, and we always kick off the segment with him. For the 2020 NFL season, it's your capo, Aaron, the Q-Dog Raider, coming to you from the great state of Texas. Don Murph, Consigliere Moss, and the boss, Sonny, Sergeant at Arms, the big Raider trucker, Mojo from the pod show, Raider Ramon, Swag Jeff, Nation, Let's talk about the draft. Uh, the Raiders, they need to go back to the Clemson treasure chest once again Amen. with this upcoming draft. Uh, based on what I've been able to see, uh, you know, I think there's a couple of players that Mayock may be able to go back to the well and take advantage of. Uh, shout out and respect goes to uh, the eye of Raider Ron from Alliance for picking out uh, hybrid linebacker safety Isaiah Simmons. Absolutely. Uh, this guy is arguably the second best yes. defensive player amazing. in the draft, and I think he might be available at number 12 overall. Did you watch that? In addition, no, I didn't see it. The center Heard six foot four T. Higgins, wide receiver, is a guy that could land in the Raiders' lap with our second number one draft pick. I mean, he's got all the attributes necessary to be a number one receiver for Derek Carr. Asterisk. <laughs> Lastly, Lynn Bowden, Jr., wide receiver kick returner out of the University of Kentucky, who ended up leading the SEC in rushing in just eight games when pressed into quarterback duty from his normal assignment as wide receiver whenever quarterback Terry Wilson was uh, put out for the season due to an injury. I mean, Bowden is arguably the best Wildcat player ever, having just single-handedly beat Virginia Tech in the Belk Bowl. If you get a chance, check out the highlights on YouTube. Okay. So, Let's just hope that the Raiders don't pass on another talent once again from the Bluegrass State, a la Josh Allen, with their second-round picks. Let's talk a little free agency. Um, you know, the Raiders are slated to have only two linebackers under contract going into the next season. Shaq Thompson has developed into a very nice player for Carolina. Formerly a safety in college, he possesses the versatility and athleticism to cover smaller players out of the backfield as well as linebackers, excuse me, tight ends. And he actually uh, packs a mighty punch and run support. So, you know, you might want to think about that. Uh, Jerron Reed is in line for a massive pay boost uh, coming out of Seattle. So he already has ten and a half sacks. And, uh, you know, he was pretty effective in 2018 as a defensive tackle. So, you know, I don't know how much production we're getting out of the center with our pass rush. But you know what? With all the bookends from uh, Salt and Pepper, I think this might work itself out. Now, let me give you a little bit of hope going into Vegas. In year three, check out these playoff teams. A new hope. The Bills, 2017, they were 9-7. Nice. 2018, they were 6-10. and 10. 2019, now they're 10-6. and six. The 49ers Love it. in 2017 were 6-10. and 10. 2018, they were 4-12. and 12. This year, they're 13-3. and three. Oh, the bandwagoners, the Packers, the Cheeseheads, America's team, uh, they went 7-9 and nine in 2017. 2018, 6-9-1, 2019. All right, and we got Eric's, the rest of Aaron's call here. 2019, 13-3. So you just take those three teams right there and you apply it and push it forward to our effort coming up this year in Las Vegas. I think year three is going to be the year of the Chucky, baby. So once again, let's talk about the hit list. Um, I think I put everybody under the sun that donned the helmet <laughs> last year that I could <laughs> under the hit list. So I'm going to go ahead and do something different for this week's hit list. All right. I'm going to put – that's right. Our Sergeant at Arms, the big Raider trucker, Sizzler Aspirations. He's done it. His last call oh. was so legendary, simply the best RF call, RFR call amazing. ever. He's done. He can no longer be a Sizzler. So I'm putting his Sizzler career on the hit list. Out of love, homie. 
So, respect goes out to B-Dog in the pasture, Watts Raider, Sugar Shane, Bobby Wasabi, Raider Homer, Splatterhead, Potts Fitz, His Lordship, Paul from Shropshire, Mississippi, High Patch Rev Raider, Kevin the Raider, Nate Running Bear, Coach Davis, Raider Lim, Raider Cliff, and Ron in Alliance. Root. Man, <laughs> there's a reason he's the capo around here. That's yeah. awesome, man. Great call, Aaron. I love the rundown of the players that the Raiders can look forward to, not only in free agency, but in the draft. Uh, man, that's legit. That was good stuff. Yeah, and we kind of talked about that. We kind of talked about that at his hit list there. Oh, about uh, uh, about Big Raider Trucker? Yeah. Yeah, I think, um, you know, so there's a few guys that have been retired from eligibility sure. for the Sizzler. Uh, so Mojo most recently, because he's, uh, he's part of the crew now sure. here in the Murphs fan cave lineup, uh, guys like Chuck, uh, from the fan club blitz, of course, Aaron, because mm-hmm. he's, he's the capo. I think big Raider trucker, man, uh, you know, I don't want to tip our hand too much, but there's probably a fanny award coming. There's something in the works. And there. I, and I think that, you know, yeah, he should be retired from Sizzler competition at this point. Don't stop calling the show. Because we love to hear from you, Big Raider Trucker. But that last call, that it was, was epic. Oh, my God. It was epic. And, and not only that, but with, uh, re- with retirement comes a small promotion. Yeah. So oh. that'll, we'll get that at the uh, – oh, we'll talk. You know okay. what I'm saying? I, it's I'm not you. just you're out of the loop, buddy. I'm with you. It's that you get retired from this, but you get brought into that. I got you. All right. So we'll – I'm not even going to ask on my – this we'll talk is, about it off the is, air. This is above my pay grade right now, so I'm just going to move <laughs> on. Yeah. Good stuff. Appreciate Aaron and, and, and uh, of course, Emiliano, Big Raider Trucker also. All right, so uh, let's keep these things going uh, uh, as they came in. So next up, we're going to hear from our buddy Ruben in Vegas. 2019, oh. 13 and 3. Nope, that wasn't it. Here it is. Hey, guys. Uh, Ruben checking in from Vegas. It's a tough loss uh, end of the year by one point against the damn Denver Donkeys. Um, I haven't talked to you guys in a minute, but anyways, you know, tough loss, end of the year. Um, you know what a lot of people say, you know, about playoffs and whatnot. We 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 had a lot on our plate, guys, you know. No receiver, hurt on linebacker position, no secondary really, you know. It was a step forward, you guys, you know. We won seven games this year, man. And no one, no one expected that from us, you know. You know, not even myself. You know, I, I thought maybe a, a five or six, but you know, lost a couple close ones. But it, it is what it is. Um, you know, this next year, this, this coming season, you know, a lot more looking forward to with our new stadium here in Vegas and whatnot. But um, I didn't get to see the last game. I was uh, in Texas, and uh, just want to give a quick shout out to uh, Raiders of the RGV down in South Texas, McAllen, Texas. Went out there to visit the, the family for Christmas and uh, didn't realize I booked the flight Sunday night and had to watch the game out there. But, you know, I looked them up on Facebook and they had a watch party going on. I posted a picture of it on my social. And um, pretty cool, man, you know, a bunch of people out there. A lot of Raider fans, man. We worldwide, that's the thing. Like like I said, me personally, guys, as a fan, I prefer Oakland. I'm old school. That's how, you know, all this. even when I was young growing up, there were the L.A. Raiders, all the stories that my uncle used to tell me about the Raiders, that, that reason I fell in love with the Raiders. But like like they say, man, the Raiders, Oakland will always be a part of our DNA. You know, it's on to the next chapter. You know, we're the Raiders. We're worldwide. There's a lot of Raider fans down there in South Texas. Like I said, I was out there. Uh, but, you know, new beginnings, new year. You know, see, uh, draft coming out out here in Vegas. The season out here in Vegas, you know, I'll be ready. Murph, Mosh, Jeff. uh I'll be out here, guys. So if you guys are out here for the draft, you know, hit me up. Maybe we can link up, or, or, or if you guys come out for a game or whatnot, we can you know meet up and whatnot. But you know, season's over, guys. You know, good season, stressful season. But like I always say, guys, win, lose, or tie, Raiders till I die. Happy New Year, guys. Merry Christmas. Have a good one. And Raider Nation, one love. Moving them out. Awesome. Appreciate you, Ruben in Vegas. Great message there. Yes. Merry Christmas. Happy New Year back at you. And of course, all of the rest of Raider Nation as well. Uh, so, Mosh, uh, Swaggo and I started talking this week about kind of some of our Vegas plans. Uh, we don't know exactly what we're doing yet. We know we're going to go, or at least uh, I know for sure I'm going to go. Uh, but I, so I started looking at my comps. I oh, started, nice. Oh, yeah. And there's, there's some out there. Oh, sweet. Yeah. If you've got them. I've got them. And, and, well, <laughs> yeah, well, yeah. If I've got them, you've. Definitely got him. We'll just say that. <laughs> so, 
Uh, yeah, so so pretty cool stuff. So we'll start organizing that. Um, yeah, Raiders Fan Radio will be represented at the draft one way or the other. So, Ruben, definitely look forward to meeting you out there and, of course, everybody else in Raider Nation that's going to be out there for the draft. Yeah, yeah, you know, uh, we're talking about it. Now that we're planning in the off season, uh, and yeah, we're in the off season, uh, uh, starting to plan this stuff, and and we're talking about where we're, we're going to go to Vegas for the for the draft, and then uh, what game we're going to go to. Oh yeah, you yeah, know? yeah. Uh, so there's th- possibly another another shout out and another opportunity to meet up with a whole bunch of people. Um, I'm excited about that. I'm really excited about that. Meeting up with with more folks and and getting out there, and it, so it brings me to my next point. Okay, I had a birthday. Yeah, you did. Happy birthday, right, thank Mosh. You, thank you, thank you. I had my my sixty first birth sixty first birthday. Yes, over the holidays, and uh, man, I had so much love from from the nation. It was crazy. It was crazy. How many people from the chat? How many people we've met? How many people? Uh, thanks, guys. I appreciate that. I I tried to. to you had like, like hundreds of people like, reach out to you. Literally hundreds. It was. I had more people from this than I had in my real life. <laughs> And, and, and I know a lot of people, you yeah, know? Yeah, yeah, I know yeah, everybody, yeah, you know, yeah, yeah. but it, so it was great. So, uh, I meant to say that at the top of the show, right on. um, during the respect, I meant to, I meant to say, you know, uh, uh, give respect to all those people. You didn't have to do that. And I'm not, I'm not trolling by any means for more birthday stuff, but, uh, it was, it was really cool. And it started like two or three days before my birthday. Oh, that's and went, awesome. You know, beyond Christmas. So yeah. it was it was a really an awesome thing. So thank you guys. That's awesome. So you know, uh, so Mosh is the twenty third, uh, Nixon is the twenty fourth, and then Jesus and Stabler are the twenty fifth. Exactly. Is that right? Exactly. I'm just saying that's a pretty good run of four. Um well, maybe not Nixon. <laughs> three out of the four. He's got a library named after him. Well, I, I, I don't. Does, <laughs> <laughs> Uncle Mosh Library. The Uncle Mosh Library. <laughs> Uncle Mosh La Biblioteca. <laughs> <laughs> okay, all right. Next up. So, normally we don't feature Aaron in the normal call part, but again, I haven't listened to any of these. This is all just coming. I'm hearing them as, as you're hearing them. Uh, I got a feeling like um, this was in, in a reaction to the Bronco game. Let's hear what he had to say. I'm on the button. Greetings. <laughs> okay. Don Murph. It's Larry Mosh. Uh, nation, it's Chicago and the Key Dog Raider, and I, I, I'm, I'm in a bad place, so I, I don't know if I can go on. I mean, this is a day that none of us thought would come, but here we are. It's the end of the season, um, another losing season in the books, uh, four-game losing streak, uh, quarterback much maligned, looks like all indications are that he's going to come back and lead us um, next season. Um it's just despair all around. So um, I'm doing the unthinkable. I'm off the bandwagon. I can't pull for this team anymore. What? I'm hanging up my Oakland jersey. <laughs> what? It's like, I'm going to Vegas, baby. The future is bright. I'm all in with the Vegas Raiders. And I tell you what, things will get better. Trust in Chucky. Trust in Maya. Come on. List, short and sweet. The aspirations of the big Raider truck are ever getting a sizzler again. That dude oh. is just too damn good. <laughs> He's again. off the list. <laughs> oh, nice oh, job, Eric. Good job, Eric. Good love job. it. Love it. Yeah, you know what, Mosh? Yeah, I guess I'm not an Oakland Raiders fan anymore either. No. No, neither nope. are you. No, neither am I. No, I'm a Vegas Raider fan. I'm a, Well, actually, I take that back. I'm a Raider fan. Yep. And always have been. Always will be. All right, next up, let's hear from our buddy, Mojo. Merry Christmas and Happy New Year, Merry Christmas, Mojo. fellas and made men. It's your boy Mojo down in San Diego calling in for the end of year edition of Raiders Fan Radio. I got two words for you. One, improvement. We improved this year. We went from a four-win team to a seven-win team. And if it weren't for the refs, we would have probably been about a nine-win team. I said that earlier. So, yeah, hey, come on. Don't get down to the dumps too bad, Raider Nation. Everybody listen, pat yourself on the back. Get ready to support the new Las Vegas Raiders and enjoy that. Second word, disappointment. I'm very disappointed in the way a couple of our players did play this year. I think they digressed. One of them would be our QB1. Missed a lot of open throws. I just... I can't get behind it anymore. I hope we're looking for options in the near future, not saying next year, but in the near future. I'm also disappointed 
with some of the play calling that we had this year. That means that goes on Chucky and it goes on the defensive coordinator. So those are my two words in the year. Keep doing what you're doing, guys. Best freaking pod- podcast on the radio, man, in Raider Nation. Love you guys. Mojo's out. Man, we love you too, Mojo. Thanks, Mojo. Yeah, man, appreciate you being part of the network. Appreciate the kind words. And, uh, uh, man, that's uh, – that's you know I think that he hit it like that's it right there like you know we were we were disappointed although our expectations were kind of met uh, we were we were let because there was that that hope there was that idea that you know when we won those three straight even though like the Bengals were one of them like we we kind of had a feeling we were going to do something there for a minute but that's all right man I'm all trusting this year three rebuild and and uh, and and Mayock and Gruden got this thing hopefully uh, figured out and headed the right direction all right next up we're going to go to. Uh, the eight three two, where we're going to hear from our buddy Matthew Mengus. Murph Mosh, Swag no, Jeff, uh, Made Men, Women. Well, that's Houston Raiders, Steve. Let me see. Let me go back. This is it. This is Matthew Mengus. This is Matthew Mengus calling from Fremont, California. Uh, just want to say that 79 is not the record um, we want, it's not the record we were looking for. I was hoping to go 10 and 6 at the best, you know, 8 and 8 at the worst. But, you know, that's just the way the cookie crumbles. We go in this off season with two first round picks. I'm excited to see what Mayock does with these first two round picks. I really, really think he's going to get called a number one wide receiver. I yes. still think Carr is going to be the quarterback for now. I don't think Mayock goes for a quarterback in the draft. I, I don't see it happening. I honestly think he'll wait till next year. If he really wants to get a young quarterback may as well wait till next year and get the guy from Clemson. Anyway, Radio Nation, it's going to be a long off season. It's going to be exciting off season. We are no longer the Oakland Raiders. We are now the Las Vegas Raiders. One Nation, Radio Nation, thanks so much for taking my call. Go Raiders. <laughs> nice, Matthew. Appreciate the call. And, uh, yeah, man, Vegas Raiders. It's kind of that theme now. It's been... It's like, you know, it's funny, Mosh, like as disappointing as the year ended, it's also been very encouraging and exciting. It's like now we have this like fresh new thing on the horizon. You know, they're calling Allegiant Stadium the Death Star, right? Like there's this new, like we're going to finally, after literally the entirety of my and your lifetime, play in a state-of-the-art facility with state-of-the-art. Like that's ours. That, yeah. yeah, that's ours. Yeah. Yeah. Like, I mean, you know, and the, the, and the, the training facility and the headquarters and like all these things. And as much as we're all diehard Oakland Bay Area guys or even L.A. guys, man, it's kind of nice that, you know, we're getting it. I know it's not in the, the best the, in the spot that we would have picked on the map. If we all had to point at the map, we would have picked a different spot. But I'm glad we're getting it like that's still going to feel good. Right. Like, aren't you still encouraged by that? Yeah. Well, it's it's a matter of head over heart. You know, I, I, logically, ethically, business-wise, it's it's such a good move for us. Long-term, it's such a good move for us. You know, uh, I'm like everybody else. You know, my heart's peeing in a trough at Oakland, Alameda <laughs> County College. You know, getting in line, you know, to, to get up there and to go. Th- I mean, just all the rest of it. The history, blah, blah, blah. But that's that's my heart. That's not my head. And, yeah. and my head says, my team's moving, and I'm supporting them, and I'm behind them. And, you know, I'm, I'm excited to be there. I'm fired up. I'm fired up about Vegas, one of my favorite cities. You know, and the fact that we get to go there and we get to do all the stuff that goes along with Vegas. You know, every, we didn't spend a lot of time tripping around Oakland doing stuff. Not that there wasn't things to do because we had our South Bay connections. You know, we had San Jose and then we went across right, and did all right. of our, all our stuff in, in the city. And But, you know, this is it's, it's something new. And it's not, people don't like change, you know. And as I've gotten older, I, I always said to myself I, I was going to fight that. You know, I wasn't going to be an old curmudgeon that hates change. Right, right, I'm right. an old curmudgeon. <laughs> but I'm an old curmudgeon. But you embrace change. But I embrace change, man. I love it. You know, I love it. I love to travel. I love to see new things, you know? Well, you know, Mosh, something cool about that is 
uh, you know, because of all the newness and because of the bigness and because there's early talk now that the Raiders could be a front runner to be the Thursday night opener of the 2020 season. You know how the how they there's all the like a oh, the yeah, big yeah, unveiling, yeah. right? And a lot of times it'll feature the previous year's Super Bowl champion. Well, if you look at who our home opponents are this year, all right, we've got the Miami Dolphins clearly aren't in the running, but the New Orleans Saints are. The Kansas City Chiefs are. The Buffalo Bills are. So there's three teams. Granted, the Saints out of those three are probably, well, maybe the Chiefs. The Saints and Chiefs are favorites or at least contenders to win. They're the, you know, one's the number one seed. I don't remember what the Saints were, two or three to the, to the, uh, to the Niners. But my, my point being this, like, this could be su- previous Super Bowl champion, current Las Vegas resident, the Raiders, opening up Allegiant Stadium Thursday night football. That'd be pretty cool. That'd be pretty freaking cool, man. That would be pretty freaking cool. All right. Uh, let's move back to the uh, to the 832. Pardon my voice cracking there. I'm getting all Peter Brady. Starting yeah, to wear yeah, out. Yeah, yeah, yeah. All right. Uh, Houston Raiders, Steve. Murph, Mosh, Swag Jeff, uh, Made Men, Women, Raider Nation. This is Steve. Houston Raiders, Steve. Top 10 list. We got a 2 billion new stadium. We play nine teams uh, under 500 next year. One of the greatest rookie classes ever will be a year older. We've got five top 100 picks. Abram is coming back. 62 million in cap space. We weren't eliminated until week 17. We won't have two dead rats in the vending machine in the new stadium. It won't take forever to cross the bridge after the game to get over to the BART yep. station. Hey, man. And I won't have to sprint a long sprint over the Hegenberger Bridge uh, at nighttime after from the bar station after going to Ricky's. Ten buck three. Great song. This is our capsule. The future's so bright. Things are going great and only getting better. I'm it's all about getting good grades. The, He's future, the future is so bright. I gotta wear shades. I gotta wear shades. The future's bright, Raider Nation can't can't wait till uh next year in the new stadium. Two things I'll miss. I'll miss going to Chubby Freeze and at the bottom up by the Amtrak Bart station with the uh, soda vendors they're yelling, Hot dog, hot dog, hot dog. Go Raiders. Oh, that was awesome, Steve. I love it. He, that was almost sing. Oh, I love it. He when does he, the talk sing. Yeah, I love it. But yeah. but because sometimes he'll bust it out, you know. Oh but, yeah, yeah, yeah. But yeah. he didn't bust that one out. I think he was trying to stifle a laugh. Oh, <laughs> that was really funny. And I love it. and Mojo and this is all like one big callback because Mojo on his show has been wearing shades. Because the future's so bright, right, he's been right, right, shit. So, right, right, right. Yeah, that was too funny. And he uh, he busted out not only that song, but the band Tim Buck Three. Like oh, that was that's great. Like and went from being in Tim Buck Three right, to right. the song. Like you brought all that together, uh, Houston Raiders, Steve. That was amazing. In only the style that he can, you know. Oh man, that was great. Hot dog, hot dog, hot dog. <laughs> That reminds me of the old Saturday Night Live skit, the Olympia Diner. Cheese bugger, cheese bugger, cheese bugger, cheese bugger. <laughs> no fries, cheap. Cheeps. No Coke, Pepsi. May I have two eggs? You want cheese bugger? Uh, <laughs> you want hash browns? No hash browns. Cheese bugger. Okay, all right. Uh, last up here, we got uh, our uh, last call of the day. Uh, guys, become a great friend of ours, a guy that we met out at the, the, uh, uh, the Raiders. Lions game this year, a uh, guy that was part of our tailgate and uh, down there hugging Josh Jacobs in the end zone after he leapt into the black yeah, hole. Uh, just a c- super cool dude, and uh, we're proud to call him a made man and a friend of Raiders Fan Radio. Let's hear from our buddy, Raider Ramon. What's good, Nick? Uh-oh. Where's Rex? <laughs> Kapu, Mojo, Coach, Paul, and the all-time sizzler, Big Raider Trucker. Man, 7-9 and nine is kind of ugly when we're 6-4. and four. But it is what it is, right? I guess some improvement is good enough, but I do think we're going to look real good. Mayock seems to pick some players. Let's hope for no GM sophomore slump. <laughs> I'm kidding. I got some faith in Mike. <laughs> Quick recap of them out. Josh Jacobs is the truth, and if you don't believe that, you've been lied to. We all know Crosby killed it this year. Old Mad Sax, Sax Crosby, oh, the like Condor. It. Some of you old Mad DC got no killer instincts. I have no rebuttal with you. Or rebuttal. I'm with you. He's still going to start next year. Don't stand me. Gruden been making the moving pieces excuse all season. Last thing. I enjoyed meeting you guys this season, chatting with you guys during the live stream. It's been great. First full season locked in with the fan show. And uh, I give all respect to the couple for putting me on. All love. What happens in Vegas? 
started in Oakland, and now we're going to Vegas. One nation, not Jeff Nation, but Raider Nation. <laughs> Google Voice, you can't touch this. And it's a Death Star. <laughs> That's awesome. Uh, Google Voice, you can't touch this. Awesome, man. As I said before your call, and I hadn't heard your call yet, we appreciated meeting you too. And, uh, and uh, again, thank you for being part of the crew, man, and good to have you. So, uh, all right, Mosh, so that brings us to the end of the, uh, the Sea of Fans mailbag. And so we award the highlight, the best of of the week, and we call it the Sizzler. Mosh, what do you got? Well, you know, Ruben in Vegas started. He said he's not bummed. He's looking forward to it. You know, win, lose, or tie, Raider till he die. Uh, Mojo, he had two good words for us. Uh, Matthew, he's got hope for the draft and hope for Vegas. And then Historian Steve, he shot us out with a top ten list. He almost sang a Timbuk Three song. <laughs> shout out! And then Ramon uh, uh, gave shout out to Jacobs and Crosby, and 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 shout outs to you and I and Jeff and RFR and and thanks Q for getting us all together. And you know it it was a uh, it was a tough list for the I guess it's the last one of the season. Yeah, kind yeah, of season to recap. for sure. But the Sizzler's got to go to a guy who's won it before. Historian Steve nice. had me cracking Sizzler. up. Sizzler. 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 Nice job, Houston Raiders Steve. Yeah, that was money, dude. That was really, really funny. <laughs> <laughs> we are Metallica, and we are here for your Oakland Raiders. You know what we are here. From The Walking Dead to errant Jedi Knights, Raiders fans are a rogues gallery. You know, we we, we haven't been uh, doing our shameless plugs telling everybody to hit the like button. Oh, yeah. And then I looked in there, and there's an unlike no, was it you? Just like, yeah, I think it might have been me. Yeah, it might have been you. Why are you always thumbing us down? I'm always thumbing us down. Always thumbing us down. But anyway, uh, yeah, hit the like button. Hit the like button. And if you want to see us live, go to youtube.com slash Murph's Fan Cave. That's M-U-R-F-S Fan Cave. And you can jump in with all the amazing people that are in there tonight. Melvin Barlow, Raider Rue, Aaron the Q-Dog, Raider Herman Munster, Reese Rock, Watts Raider, Johnny Smalls, Pirate 1975. Pirate 1975 asked, hey, Murph, is the rap deal still on for Vegas? Yes, it is. Absolutely. If we beat the Chiefs, I will rap on, even if we're not doing Mondays with Mikey Murph, we will do it on this show. Uh, May Spitfire is in there. The Big Easy. Uh, Ron the Materator. What's up, Ron? Thanks for clocking in, Ron. There's like <laughs> five minutes left to go on the show. No, we appreciate Mon, uh, Ron so much. And uh, Dakota Raiders in there. Good to see him again. Uh, who else did I miss? Uh, Raider Ramon, of course. And uh, so appreciate all of you uh, for supporting what we do here at Raiders Fan Radio and Murph's Fan Cave. Hey, before we uh, wind things down, Murph, yeah. I didn't mean to interrupt you. Please. But so, so going forward, we're, are we going to do a Super Bowl show? Yeah, so Swag and I were talking about that this morning. We thought, it, especially if it's one of those dopey teams playing yeah, it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, let's get together and do a Super Bowl show that like morning. Like we did last year. We had a lot of fun doing we that. We really did. We had a blast. We had, we had a blast. blast doing that. So, so Mosh and I, so if you haven't, uh, if you did, if you missed that, go back and check us out. I don't remember what the dates were, but you can find our Super Bowl show. Basically, we recap the three Raiders Super Bowl victories, uh, it, it going back to 76, 81, and, and, and of course, uh, um, uh, 83 with uh, 84 January 22nd 1984 uh, against the Washington Redskins Black Sunday but anyways um, I don't know what format we'll do since we kind of did that recap of those right, games right. I'm not but we definitely will do something we'll we'll do some sort so we're of, not going off the air we'll be back in we'll we'll be back either in, in like in two weeks right yeah yeah on our our regular Wednesday yes. run. Yes, and we should. Uh, we'll be, we'll be close to knowing who's going to be in the Super Bowl by then. Absolutely, or we'll have a good idea of it. And then we'll probably go into our off-season schedule every two weeks on Wednesdays. And then on the off weeks, we'll, uh, on, on a bunch of those, we're going to have uh, uh, Tales from the Nation. Yes. You know, so that there will be something up there, some content up there. And then, of course, you'll still be posting the Mojo's Pod shows and, and the rest of the content from RFR. Absolutely. And we're going to do, um, I'll get rekindled with the, uh, the RFR conversations. We'll start doing our interviews again. Uh, Senior Bowl is coming up. Uh, last year, we interviewed uh, Matt Schneidman and Alexis Stabler live down at the Senior Bowl. This year, the Senior Bowl is the Bengals coaches and the 
and the Lions coaches. So not a lot of Raider connectivity there. Um, but I'm still going to do my best to go down there. And, and I think Swago might uh, uh, head down there with me. And if you have a chance, of course, please, please come as well. Uh, but there was a lot of opportunity for us to, uh, to bring some cool content from the Senior Bowl last year. So um, we're definitely going to do that again. So look for that coming from us. Uh, also, our segments, we'll get back into – you know, things like more fundamentals and Raiders and pop culture and, and black hole, the black hole yeah. and like all that stuff. We'll get back into all that kind of stuff. So definitely keep those calls coming in. Um, you know, I know in the off season, it's, it's you know, uh, there can be a, a lull, especially, you know, with, of course, the last few weeks of the playoffs is, as, you know, teams, you know, make coaching changes and whatnot. There's a lot of things to talk about still Raiders related, but uh, but definitely keep those things coming in and and and, and we'll, we'll definitely play them. We, I'm assuming we're not going to have the, the same level of calls that we normally get week in, week well, out. Well, and May, we May Spitfire asks, does Murph's fan cave going off the air? No way, no way. No. No, no, no. no, 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 no we no, are no, not no. going off the air. No, we're just saying that we're we're getting close to a a – our off season schedule. Yeah. So, and, so, you know, and, and you and I are like, well, you know, we're supposed to have off season, but we end up doing it just about every week anyway. Absolutely. We, <laughs> yeah. Cause yeah. we miss it. Yeah. Exactly. You know? Yeah. Cause it's a lot of fun. We just love doing this and, and, and we love hanging out with you guys and talking Raider football. So no, by any means, you're going to get uh, still a ton of content coming in from us. Actually, we got, we got the XFL starting. Oh, yeah. Like, we yeah. might be talking some XFL football. Like, we'll keep it fun, and, and, and we'll keep it always Raider-related unless I start going off on Star Wars tangents because Uncle Bosch loves it when I do that. So he loves hearing me talk about— That's the, the outro the, music. The, so you don't want me to talk about the Emperor? <laughs> and like, you know what I mean? Like, you know— Okay. I want you to talk about shutting up. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you for checking us out tonight live here, RFR. That is YouTube.com slash Murph's Fan Cave. Subscribe to us. Hit the button. Hit the bell on the YouTube and also on the audio version of the podcast. Please subscribe to us there. Any podcast service. That's Apple. That's Stitcher. That's Google. That's Spreaker. That's anywhere. Subscribe to us, please, and support what we're doing. Thank you, Raider Nation. We love you. Enjoy the uh, the, uh, the the off season, the postseason. Enjoy the playoffs, the Super Bowl, and you are going to hear a ton from us coming up. And so, uh, at this point, I'm going to go ahead and turn it over to the one and only Uncle Mosh. Uncle Mosh, take us home. All right. Well, thank you for tuning in tonight, Pirate 1975, Watts Raider, Travon Graves, uh, Johnny Smalls, the Big Easy. Oh, my gosh, everybody was here. Mojo was here. Q was here. Raider Ramon was here. The Dakota Raider. Melvin Barlow was here. Uh, who'd I forget? Murph, help me out. Uh, uh, Raider Roo. Raider Roo was here. Eye Patch was here. Ron the Mater Raider showed up. I mean, it was, uh, it, was a good, it was a good night. We had a bunch of great content in the, in the chat. And uh, we're just fired up to be here. We'll be seeing you guys in the offseason. So thanks for listening tonight for the missing little swago. This is your old Uncle Murph. And this is your What's old your Uncle name? Murph. Uncle Mosh <laughs> and, and Murph. And you're listening to Raiders Fan Radio, where we take a lot. Oh, man, I blew that one. <laughs> where we take a lot. <laughs> <laughs> I've done how many of these? How many hundreds of these have I done? <laughs> Thanks for listening tonight, everybody. <laughs> You've been getting... <laughs> you getting into the eggnog over there, Mosh? Oh, my gosh. This is your old Uncle Mosh. You've been listening to Raiders Fan Radio, where we take a lighter side journey into the dark side. What happened in Vegas started in Oakland. Did it. That's, that's where I started smoking. <laughs> 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 Those damn camels I used many, to steal from your how uncle. Many, how many camels have you smoked in the Oakland Alameda County oh Coliseum? Oh, my God. Guess? It was so many. And I don't even do that. I don't even know if they still sell camels. I think they still sell camels. Uh, do they? I wouldn't yeah. know. I, I mean, it's been so many years since I've smoked that. But, man. <laughs> 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 Good night, everybody. God bless. Oh, man. Oops. <laughs>